Spider-Man, Spider-Man, do whatever a spider can. Back to work on the old 1950 Ford F1 that will eventually become a combination of a Dodge Ram 2500 4x4 with the Ford F1 body on top. And today I'm checking into the brakes. I've taken the liberty of already putting her up on jack stands and undoing the bolts on the wheels. And it's time to pop those off to see what surprises are waiting for me down below. But first, the list. I'm gonna replace all of the flexible hoses. There's three of them, two in the front, one in the back. I'm gonna replace all four slave cylinders. I'm gonna replace the master cylinder. I'm gonna make new hard lines, one that runs along the chassis, and there's a line that runs across the differential. And then I'm gonna bleed the brakes. Time to get at it. I've taken the nuts off. Let's find out what's behind wheel number one, shall we? <laughs> uh, half a century's worth of spider activity? That's a lot of web. Ew. Oh, and also, ooh, wheel spacers. Holy crap. I'm not a big fan of those. Wow, look at this. This is craziness. It's a lot of spider web. Yuck. I'm gonna throw this in the garbage. So I guess this explains why I was thinking that the rear differential wasn't original in my previous video. I'll put the link up there or down in the description for sure, but this makes a lot of sense now why the, narrow, the rear seemed narrower because this looks to be like a good inch and a quarter of, <laughs> inch and a quarter of thickness pushing the wheel out. That's increasing the front track by three inches or so. These tend to put a lot of lateral, a lot of vertical load on the bearings and they wear out the bearings prematurely. I don't know for sure whether the front drums are the same as the rear drums. I can't find any information online about that. It seems like the front drums might be like a quarter of an inch thicker, two inches wider rather than, rather than an inch and three quarter on the rears. Um, I'm hoping that the brake shoes are in good condition and that the cylinders haven't leaked because honestly, I might have a hard time finding the brake hardware kit for these drums. I can get the shoes and the drums, no problem, but other than LMC truck, I can't really find a hardware kit. So let's discover together what's behind this drum, shall we? All right, so that's a pleasant surprise. It doesn't look like the cylinder is leaking. It's just got like brake dust all over it. Um, the shoes seem to have a good amount left, probably at least 50%. This looks to be a pretty standard kind of brake shoe setup, so I could probably adapt an existing hardware kit if I need to, but I don't need to because everything's in pretty good condition. I am going to replace the cylinders on all four corners. I've got the bits and pieces for that, and that way I'm pretty sure I'm going to avoid any problems with these old cylinders. I've also got the soft lines. These don't seem to be in too bad condition, but I'm just going to replace them anyways. Usually when I get a vehicle, I'm going to replace two things as a matter of course. If it's a modern engine with a timing belt, that timing belt gets changed unless the previous owner can prove when it was changed last. When a timing belt goes, it can mess up the engine and that's an expensive repair. The other thing is pretty much the brakes. Check them out and if there's anything weird with them, replace them because you know, these things are fairly important. Going is great, stopping can be better. All right, not as much spider activity on this one. Junk. No, oh, that's on a little tight. Might have to persuade that with a hammer. Brake shoes are in similar condition, at least 50% left, but this cylinder right here is starting to leak. You can see oil starting to gather and collect dust down here. It's pretty wet, so that's uh, validation right there of changing the old cylinders out. Again, the hose doesn't look too bad, but not taking a chance. On to the rear. All right, let's see if I'm doing these bolts have any effect. 
Easy peasy. Bit of rust on the inside surface of this drum. The shoes look okay, but uh, as with the front cylinder, it looks like this one is starting to weep a little bit. So this is the right rear brake, and I'm gonna replace this cylinder as a matter of course. I'll take some emery cloth to the actual drum itself and clean it up a little bit. But there's no real wear on there. It's no lip or anything, which is nice. Also in good shape. Also weeping a little bit. Shoes are about 50%. Same as the front. So this should be a pretty straightforward job. Next, I'm gonna start taking the brakes apart. But first, let me show you the parts that I've bought. First off, some 3 16 inch brake tubing to replace that crusty, rusty brake line that's running along the frame rail. New slave cylinders, front and rear, left and right. Soft lines. So two of these will be for the front brakes. One will be from the hard line running along the chassis to the differential that then splits in a Y to left and right brakes on the rear. And last but not least, a brand new master cylinder. I love that in this day and age, you can still buy a brand new master cylinder for a truck that's 73 years old. This is not a rebuilt, this is a brand new I'm pretty sure it's a Dorman master cylinder. It's gonna replace the one that's in there. The brakes that are in there actually do work. They don't seem to have any problems, but I don't wanna trust my life to 73 year old components that have been sitting out in the weather for a long, long time. Now you've seen the brakes and what kind of condition they're in and what I need to do to get those back up to spec. Let me show you the rest of the brake system starting with. Flexible hose that goes from the master cylinder along the chassis of the truck to this Y splitter that goes to the left and the right side. Brake drums over there. This Y is probably going to be in fine condition. There shouldn't be anything wrong with that. I'm just going to Cut out the old hard lines here and make new ones for the left and right side. Pretty straightforward. This is really corroded. I don't like that at all. Gonna be replacing the hard line that goes all the way along the chassis to the master cylinder. And speaking of the master cylinder, let me climb under the truck and show you that. And here's the master cylinder. This is the access hole from the driver's side footwell where you can reach the top of the master cylinder and put brake fluid in. On the back is a three-way splitter. The hydraulic fluid goes to the front right of the vehicle, the front right brake. This line takes it to the rear of the brake for the two left and right rear brake drums. And this line here takes it to the front left brake. These lines are all ancient and there, there's a lot of corrosion on here. This is the brake pressure switch. I assume it lights up the rear brake lights when you press the brake pedal and the pressure switch con closes the contact in there. I haven't seen it do that yet. Either the bulbs are bad or this is bad, but I will find that out. These are super simple brakes. Uh, they are a little worrisome because if anything fails, like any one of these lines lets go, if a brake hose ages over time and splits, that's it. You have no brakes. You are along for the ride. On the front side of the master cylinder, this is really cool. So here's the brake linkage. This is the lever that pushes the rod into the master cylinder, creating the pressure for the brakes. But what's really cool is that there's the brake pedal right there. It comes through a hole in the floorboard here and good luck in ever making this cab fully waterproof. Can you imagine getting into a stream where that brake pedal goes through the floor? It's just gonna come gushing in. But yeah, this is, this is kind of cool old technology. So I gotta remove the pin here. I've gotta disconnect the master cylinder from here. Uh, it looks like it'll come out real easy. And speaking of that, it's time to start ripping out these old parts and replacing them with new ones.
bolt cutters for the win. I use them on old brake lines because they crimp the tubing after they cut them, which helps prevent getting brake fluid all over the place. I'll use this as a pattern for the new hose. When I get to that point, I have to clean up the Y junction there first. I've given all the brake parts a good cleaning. I have taken apart the star wheel and I lubricated areas that were a little bit rusty, cleaned them all off. I put a bit of grease on the threads here, all the way along the threads, even though the adjustment is only about here. That'll help prevent this from corroding any further, but now it turns nice and smoothly. So now I've got all the parts all cleaned up, ready to go back into the brakes. Let's get to it. Tiny little blob of grease on the end of the pushrod ball. That way I know it'll stay well lubricated. That is all put together now. A little bit of a struggle to get the brakes together, but the tools sure came in handy and I finally figured it out. So I'm pretty happy. It's all clean. New slave cylinder is in. I am not going to bore you with the other three brakes because they are pretty much identical to this and there's no point in sitting through watching me struggle doing the other three. The only difference being that the front brakes obviously don't have the parking brake cable and the parking brake lever in there, but other than that, absolutely identical. So I will do that off camera and now I'm going to start working on replacing the brake lines. So I got my 3 16 brake line cut for the first length that goes on the left side of the differential. I'm going to put the 3 8 fittings on here, put it into the turret crimping tool, and make perfect flares and I'll show you how that works. It's been a while since I've done a PSA. Let's do one now. First, let me change into my dad toque. There we go. Don't use this type of flaring kit to make your brake flares. I highly recommend you don't. And the reason why, these are really hard and finicky to get a flare done properly. This clamp almost never grips enough for you to get enough pressure on the actual end of the tubing to get a flare on there. Some of them don't even come with the right dies where you can do a double flare. And double flares are what you need in automotive brakes because seriously, you don't want to risk your life on something just because you used a cheap tool. Use a turret flaring tool. They cost a bit of money. They're about 200 bucks. I'll put a link in the description to a turret tool you can have a look at. You may be able to rent them locally if you're making your own brake lines, but it's worth the cost. Anyways, I'm doing my brake flares now and I'll show you my turret tool and it works a treat. You'll always make much better flares than these things can give you. Enough for the PSA. I'll put my work toque back on and get back to work. So the first thing I do is pick the right die. This is a 3 a 3 16 inch tube. I want the 45 degree flare. I think this side is for transmissions or some other type of connector, which I don't have on this truck. So let's put that in, put the tube in, put the other half of the die on top. It gets locked into place. Using operation zero, that sets the depth that the tube should go in and then I can tighten this down so you can see that's held in place at the right spot turn it to 3 16 operation 0 make sure that's nice and tight first operation what it's done it's first cre it's created the first flare which is like a kind of a little bubble turn it to operation 2 for the 3 16 and then that goes in and you can see effortless perfect flare don't forget the ends I've done that before because you don't get them on 
after you put the second flare on back to operation zero tube in the die lock it in place line it all up crimp it all down operation one for three sixteenths operation two for three sixteenths perfectly flared Alright, so I've got the hard lines running along the rear axle complete. I cleaned up the Y block, looks pretty good. I've got a new brake hose going from the chassis down to the distribution block. Runs across the differential in a way where I can remove the inspection plate without getting, without the brake hose getting in the way. Anchored down and all the way to the other side. Rear brakes are all cleaned up and lubricated, and I've got the new slave cylinders installed. All right, so taking out the master cylinder, the old one. I'm just gonna cut these hard lines. Disconnect the pressure switch, that was easy. Undo the three bolts on the front, and that should just come right out. It's the old master cylinder. Pretty darn crusty. Okay, so the old master cylinder is out. I'm going to bench bleed the new master cylinder and get it installed where the old one used to live. All right, so I have the new master cylinder set up in the vise. I've transferred the splitter from the old one as well as the brake pressure switch. Got a brand new bottle of DOT3 brake fluid. I've set up a little return line. Every master cylinder that I have ever replaced has had instructions in it that, say, that says you have to bench bleed it. And that just means filling up the reservoir with brake fluid, pushing on the plunger a few times to cause it to circulate, and that works out the air bubbles in the actual mechanism itself. Makes it a lot easier to bleed later, but easy enough to do. I'll get on that now. Try not to make an Exxon Valdez level mess here. And she's done. I'm going to pull this out of the way, but I'm not going to take it off yet until I actually run the hard lines to it after I've installed the master cylinder. I'm just going to put the cap back on, but I'm also trying to figure out how I'm going to get fluid in there from through the floorboard of the truck, because that's a finicky little hole to pour fluid into. One hour later. The master cylinder is installed and the hard lines are done. The brakes on this truck are finished. Mostly. She'll be able to stop on a dime now. Well, maybe at least a quarter, at worst, a 50 cent piece. Let me show you what I got finished. New hard lines on the axle. New flexible hose going up to the chassis. New hard line running all along the chassis to the master cylinder. On the front side of the truck, new flexible hoses. Front right. A little hard to see, but right there you can see the new hard line going back to the master cylinder. Front left, new hard line going back to the master cylinder along the frame rail. And on the other side, new flexible hose, all connected up. And last, but far from least, brand new master cylinder installed, all the hard lines routed into the distribution block, and I've even reconnected the pressure switch. Still don't know if it works or not, but you know what? I'll find that out later. That's the hard line going to the front right, that's the hard line going to the front left, and that's the hard line that goes back to the rear brakes. Pretty happy about this. And last but not least, the list. Flexible hoses. Done. All four slave cylinders replaced. Master cylinder. Done. Made new hard lines. Check that off. Bleed the brakes. Partially. I'll finish the rest when I adjust the drums. 
If you got any questions or any comments on what you think so far, put them in the comments. I will answer you. If you like the video, mash that like button. And if you like what I'm doing with this old pickup truck, why not subscribe to my channel? As you know, I got a lot of fun stuff planned for her. Regardless, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.